Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And here is part three of Martian bacterial colonists of Earth. The Mars colonists said today, always taking it with a grain of salt, that I was part of them. And I said, why? They said, because we had to replicate you and include you in our uh, model so that your body wouldn't reject us. I don't know what that means. Here's something. Suppose, suppose I were uh, an extremely advanced Martian scientist, Martian bacterial scientist, who was an expert at bioengineering there, the space stations on which the, that's us, our physical bodies on which the Martian colonists live. And I had, had a way of changing uh, human genes using intron technology, mobile intron technology, intron, right? And I, I had over the uh, like thousands of years that the Martian, this is again just, just a story, over the thousands and thousands of years that the Martian uh, bacterial colonists had been associating with the human colon rigorous scientific methods uh, say were instituted to prevent the wrong sorts of introns from getting out into the human population at large which would lead to a mass die-off that's undesirable less space stations and a lot of bacterial colonists down the drain okay so the rule is, let us say, for the science research is rigorously test first, right? So, so now they've come up with an intron that they like that's going to change the human genes in a way that's more compatible with their own civilization. And how do you, how do you get that intron distributed through the population of space stations on Earth? That'll be us. Well, suppose this were a possibility. Suppose there were volunteers that offered to be um, the, the carriers or transporters, self-sacrificial kamikaze carriers or transporters of new introns, right? Keeping in line that mind that a bacterium might feel that all of its clones, all of its asexually reproduced, exactly similar um, bacteria, were just a part of itself, its greater self. So, so one lineage of bacteria, mm, bacterium, might decide to donate certain of its progeny, which are actually merely extensions of its own gene, gene makeup to this project, right? Knowing that it, it wouldn't die in the process, it would just be uh, slightly injured, I guess, by the loss of these, of these cells, which it must be used to because, you know, elimination is like that. A lot of colonists down the drain every day. And to get back to this topic, suppose certain bacteria were volunteered to to be bioengineered into a bacterium that causes the symptoms of a cold in a human being. And that includes coughing, right? So people cough, they get this bacterium, this bacterial strain, they cough, and they transmit the bacterial uh, illness, quote unquote, to other people. Right, and when the when the bacteria that are specially engineered get into the human body, or the person that's infected with a cold or flu, then the intron that is that is intended to be transported to these people is released, the mobile intron, intron. either before uh, the the um, immune system cells of the person attacked this new bacterial strain or during the process of the dissolution that occurs when the 
when the attack is complete. So that would be a very ingenious way of introducing new um, genetic modifications into a population of substations, space stations. Their theory is that humans were bioengineered or produced uh, an artificially produced uh, like organism it, that was intended to be produced to provide them with a home. And while they were much larger while they were on Mars, of which they have very fond memories, um, they were bioengineered very small so that because there were so many of them, so that they could make the most of each um, human machine uh, living space. I spoke to Alpha Centauri about this the other day, and uh, the, the person that I talked to said that they were banned from living on Alpha Cent because, uh, because they so aggressively take up territory and expand their population. Then I talked to the Martians about that, and they said that, uh, that they can't bioengineer that out of their species because the uh, social memory complex has such strong uh, feelings towards the importance of that uh, aggressive um, territorial aggression. Um, so, so from that I get that, that in their racial memory, they, uh, just like I think every species, they have the desire to, they, they're species-centric species centric and they believe that their species is the one that deserves to live you know they don't take into account us or other species much in fact they're willing to think that other species just don't count it reminds me of the way we treat the ecosystem on earth somewhat and so Alpha Centauri, I gather from that conversation, must have within it the, the ability to restrain itself as far as territorial expansion goes, or they would not um, look down upon, they would consider it more normal and natural for the Martian colonists to, to, do, to do their own territorial expansion efforts. So the older a race gets, I feel, they must be much older than the Martians. You know. Um, the Martians uh, say that they've been on Earth 150 million years, 150 million, twice as long as the fossil as the fossil record shows, and they say that before that they were keeping tabs on us. Their very uh, their history, uh, their their recall archiving of the historical records is very impressive. Martians' ability to mind control people through the gut brain uh, has to do with the samskaras that people have, the, um, the uh, morphogenetic field distortions, the distortions of the light in the etheric net and the electromagnetic field and all the subtle bodies and the physical body too. Um, if uh, it's those that they strum is it were those that they play in order to affect our emotions. For instance, yesterday I had an incident. It was um, all day long talking to the Martians, rather much more than I would wish to. And they, they, they became like um, agitated, I guess you could say. The entire population became agitated. And, is, and it seems that they're able to strum the samskaras in such a way as to create um, astral stories that are very negative, which they did. They created one that I actually fell for. And um, so I felt my, my emotion became very fearful, extremely fearful. And, and that caused my immune system to, to go downhill just a little bit for a minute. And... and uh, and that caused the germ that had entered my 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 nose at ch at church that day to um, to propagate more, so that today I have a little headache and maybe the beginning of a slight uh, dip in my health. And the notion that they had in that is that uh, th it was really a complicated, intelligent plan 
to um, to tie me down for a while, as they say, tie me down and take me out is the way they they term it, uh, so that their their um, what's it called space station won't have a chance to talk to other people, especially the light worker community. It's very important to them. And, and any possible, like, uh, twin flame and like that, it's important to them that I don't talk to anybody because they feel that I know things that other people don't know, you know. They don't want the word to get around about the samskaras, the distortions of light, and how they manipulate the gut brain. But, but you know, all of this doesn't matter too much because the way is very clear regardless what we have to do as, as, as humans is we have to, to clear those samskaras out. And what better way to do it than through the, lang the new languages of light and sound. So what we can do, this is my plan, I'm just going to go on uh, like a, a steady diet of, of Judy Samskara's language of light transmissions so that uh, the, the samskaras clear and the, and, the, and the telepathic talk clears and there'll be no room for like, what's it called? Passive aggressive behavior on the part of my Martian colonists. That's my plan. So, if the Martian colonists considered us to be inanimate objects, there for, for the perpetuation of their race, put together or like, uh, constructed for the perpetuation of their race. Then if there were nutrients that they needed in us in order to perpetuate their species and to continue uh, staying alive, then from their point of view they would be mining those nutrients uh, from our inanimate space station. So that could be where the notions of the aliens who uh, mined Earth's resources came from.